Hey everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Thank you for joining me today on probably one of the rarest pieces we've had here. We've had thousands and thousands of cars come over here, come through here uh, over the years. And when you get something like this, and let me just run down a couple quick bullets with you. Uh, I'd like to say hello to my assistant, Steele. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe he just loves Mopars as much as I do. Anyway, we're talking about a TA Challenger less than a, a thousand of them built like this, right? This is a four speed version, lots of automatics out there. Four speeds with matching numbers still, super rare, throw in B5 blue. Uh, and we have what I consider a collector quality, collector grade and super rare. So as, as these cars continue to go up in value, this is exactly what you wanna do. This is how you wanna get something that you can enjoy and hopefully as you're enjoying it, it's continuing to go up in value, which is pretty rare. All right, so I'd like to talk about quality of paint. All over the world, people stop me and they'll say, hey, I noticed you do this, and I love that. It's kind of cool. Well, the reason why we do that is because pictures can make paint look whatever you want it to be, right? But the video doesn't lie, man. When you can read all of these letters in here, nice and crisp, like you can see everything in there, and you can read it properly, that's the kind of paint we're looking for. Throw in the fact that it's B5 blue, which is awesome, and then this, the matte of the hood, because this right here is a fiberglass hood from the factory, which is pretty cool in its own right, right? And the contrast of the two just makes it look like a muscle car. Like why are some muscle cars better looking than other muscle cars? A lot of times we'll see a car and go, wow, that's a great looking car, but we don't really know why it's a great looking car. So let me point out a couple things here that make a difference, I think, right? The Challenger body line is pretty cool because it's here versus say maybe a Cuda. But in this particular case here, we have that special hood, right? And we have the mat of the hood. We have this matte TA callout stripe here. We have the correct 15 by seven uh, road wheels with period correct polyglass tires. Don't minimize the wheel and tire setup because if you were to go out and buy that right now, that's $2,500 just for wheels and tires, right? You can see how it can cost up to $100,000 to restore a car. Here we have the side exit exhaust only on the TA, right? Only on the TA and the, uh, and the AAR, but side exit exhaust because these cars were built to go racing. They had to make enough of them to race them. And here we have examples sold to the public. What a cool piece. All right, so let's take a peek under the hood because this is a lot of the value of these cars is tied up in here, okay? I wanna show you some of the correct things and I'm gonna show you a couple incorrect things on this car that would be easily rectified. If, you, if that's important to you, you let us know, okay? First off, the engine compartment here is done the way it's supposed to. On a Mopar, it's painted. It has the two fender tags on there. The fender tag over there says Trans Am on it. That way you know uh, that this is correct. The exhaust manifolds are correct for this high performance engine. It also says uh, three, four, it says TA block on it. Uh, you can't see it in this video, but uh, we have pictures of it. So you know that this is a special block for this car so you could actually go racing. It's different than the standard 340 block. Fast ratio power steering, power steering cooler, right? That's kind of cool. Typically you'd find those in police package cars and they added a lot of heavy duty things to this. Even though it's a small block, it has the same size radiator as the big block cars, all right? And then the detail stuff, right? The six pack call out here, sealed for fresh air to come in here and not take up the hot air that's inside here. Little stuff like the battery topper, which looks so nice, the correct decals, everything's not painted all black or it's all silver it's always all, all nice and different colors so when you open the hood it looks really really good under here and i just like to be proud of stuff especially like this here it doesn't have hood springs on it for a reason some people put hood springs on this car and it holds the hood up however because it's a fiberglass hood it has steel reinforcements around it but it's a factory fiberglass hood it can end up warping down at that end and stick up a little high and some people don't like that so that's why we don't put the springs on it and we use the factory prop rod here and put it right back where it goes, lock it down. And then my favorite part, which I have uh, requested to be on my casket, are hood pins. All right, so this is one of those rare muscle cars where straight line performance isn't only reason why it was built, right? This was meant to go on a road racing course and part of the Trans Am series. So it has the spoiler in place to keep this down. These cars went, uh, you know, reportedly uh, 150 miles an hour from the factory. Um, I haven't driven them at 150. I got it up to like 147-ish, 148, and I clicked it into fourth gear, but I was texting it at the same time, and so I really couldn't stay focused. Anyway, just kidding about all that. Anyway, uh, part of this style, though, is what makes it so great. A lot of people see the back end of this car. Why? Because it is a fast car, and it sounds so good. However, it's even, take it to the next level, the trunk is so detailed. Let's take a peek inside there, all right? 
All right, so inside the trunk, you're going to see things like uh, the correct spare tire with inflator, the correct herringbone mat that's inside there, right? It's painted inside the trunk the way it's supposed to be, not like a Ford or a GM, which would have been uh, just splatter paint or painted black, right? Chrysler spent a lot of money uh, painting their cars. They painted everything under the hood, in the trunk, underneath. It just makes a big difference on them. It makes them look so good. And then you have the other detail side in there. Uh, and I think if you went to a car show, you wanted to open the trunk of the hood, you'd be really proud to do so. Ready? All right, so come join me in here because we're back to authentic again. Why are we back to authentic again? Because we have some great stuff in here that just you can't get in, in virtually any other car except the Mopar and this right here. The pistol grip shifter may be the very best shifter handle ever invented. Why every car doesn't go like that? Probably because of Greenpeace or something uh, who is offended by it. But Anyway, it's great. Little things on this car like the reverse light that's here. That works when you put it in reverse. The key lockout for reverse works the way it's supposed to. And you say, well, Tone, who cares about all that little stuff? You're right. Who cares about that? What that does say, though, however, is the level of restoration. If somebody's willing to go through and make that light work, which probably didn't work two years after the car was new, and the whole reverse lockout system so that people couldn't steal the car, right? That's a lot of effort to make that stuff work. And it says more about the whole car than it does just about the single components in themselves. It's got the correct restored wheel here. It's got the original AM radio, full set of gauges that are there, right? The dash is new. The carpets are new. The seat covers are new. It's got the factory console in here, which is really nice. The headliner is new. Uh, and as we look around, it's like, a, it's like just a really beautifully restored car that sounds great, runs great, and just rolls on down the road. All right, so what does it mean to have an investment-grade car? It means that you have a car that's great looking to begin with, right? You have a car that's matching numbers, right? What does that mean? It means that this is the original engine that came in the car and over all these years, 40 and 50 years later, the engines are still in the car operating, which is amazing in its own right. A car that's restored and is beautiful, a car that has low production numbers, right? Low production numbers, cars are less than a thousand built, especially when they built hundreds of thousands of these cars, hundreds of thousands. And this is one of less than a thousand. When it was new, how many are left, right? Half, who knows? Throw in the fact that it has the fender tags, it has documentation, it's just a beautifully restored, beautifully running, beautifully driving piece of history uh, that you'd be proud to own at any time and take to any car show. Anyway, call us, 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this amazing TA Challenger. Don't forget to check the website too. And uh, if you click here down at the bottom, like, subscribe, and share with some friends, that would be awesome. Have you ever driven a muscle car that handled, huh? These built for the track, 1970. They had to build these so they could go road racing, Trans Am series. Multi-carbureted, not a giant heavy V8 sitting over the front end. And this car goes around the corner. The brakes are amazing in this thing. We are wheeling down. Let me check this thing here. Juice. I got Angie over here. She's filming. She's pretty thrilled to be in here. Downshifted. Hit the apex, back on the gas, nice sounds coming out. Pistol grip shifter.